Hi folks, it's Seno Bob, and we're back in Atabeno Park, this time for a speed build, finishing off a habitat from the last time. You can see my concept while sitting in the habitat. Uh, I had moved it around a little bit, and that messes with the grid sometimes, so I decided to start over from scratch with a better idea of what I was going to do with the wall. Uh, even with a better idea, you'll see me change a few things in the course of this speed build, because I either had a better idea or... Uh, clearly uh, didn't have a good idea uh, when I put in some of the early pieces. Um, so this is for sauropods, which means it's got to be big. So it's physically just going to take time to uh, put this thing together. Um, and the inside structure needs to be strong because it's for sauropods. So I, that also affects the uh, sort of two-level effect on this care platform. Uh, because if you want to feed the animals, you're going to have to be high. Um, if you want to train them to uh, stand in a particular position or something, uh, you're still also going to have to be high. So the shell was pretty fast to build, uh, and then it was time to um, detail it. And the first thing I decided to do was build the doors. And I'm building them on one end, and I want to set up a... Uh, power uh, opening and closing system because these are massive doors. Um, so that's what I'm doing now, playing with the modular stuff and uh, setting it up, duplicating it wherever I can, and sometimes discovering that it needs to be slightly changed. So when I get this mostly built, I want to um, copy all of this and move it to the other side. You're probably noticing the trees in the middle of this, and that's because this is not going to be the final location of where this building will be. So I didn't bother moving them because I still thought I might want them. Right now, uh, though, I'm building a sort of little up and over ramp uh, for the animals to get over the track system that the doors run on. Um, the doors themselves would just clear that uh, as they're um, powered, opened, or closed. So, setting up the end, uh, I want to do a skylight in the center of this thing. So, i am got to set up with that in mind. So, here I'm building some venting in the uh, gable ends. Uh, and just like the uh, the doors, I'm going to set it up on one side and then duplicate it to the other. Uh, modular pieces to the rescue by taking the air conditioning vent ends and uh, flattening them a little and stretching them out make for great louvers. Um, so I thought that worked out pretty well. And uh, the usual trick of doing one uh, strip, selecting the color, and then just duplicating them all. And decided I wanted it to uh, have a little bit of overhang, so added another panel. Tried stretching it a little bit, but it distorts when you do the whole building, and it means it won't fit the gable end. Uh, being able to swap out those pieces just with a click for the glass, so much easier than some other games. Um, and I wanted to reinforce those windows because this structure would have to be pretty strong. I'm imagining that there's some kind of freight elevator uh, in this extension here uh, to get uh, sauropod levels of food up to the upper uh, care platform. To do, I had wanted to do a hip roof. Uh, on that little extension, and you saw me fussing with trying to uh, do it with hip roof piece, but obviously I needed the two pieces to do that. Uh, moving to the outside of the building, adding a loading dock um, for uh, deliveries of food supplies and whatnot for our uh, sauropods, and building a, a frame to roof that over by the traditional method of 
assembling one segment and then reproducing it. Uh, you'll notice I'm reproducing the uh, supports and the roof separately because uh, I didn't want exactly the same spacing. Um, time to put doors in and double doors to that uh, freight elevator and uh, general loading area and a single uh, staff door down at the other end so that there's another way in and out of the building. This is one of those places where I decided I'd put the whole, excuse me, the whole walls in rather than those uh, archways. Uh, and now it's time to start throwing some details on this thing. And even with these, it's going to be a little spare, but I am just find myself not sure what kind of equipment uh, would be necessary in there. The loading dock, on the other hand, is going to have a lot of stuff on it. So decided to set that up with a fair number of pieces. Uh, cans and boxes and you know, stack of things. I uh, did decide to cheat a little and take the ones out of the middle since they won't be seen. All of that little just saving a piece here and there can uh, add up. So that's looking pretty good. Um, back inside and some uh, clutter in there uh, to uh, keep the animals uh, cared for and the area working. Uh, I imagine there's probably some kind of oversized tools would be necessary for dealing with sauropods, but I have no idea what those would be, so I haven't tried to create them. Uh, so I'm pulling in a prefab that I did of a locker, and I'm going to set up a couple of sets of lockers uh, in here. Um, checking to make sure my uh, group is all grouped together, which it isn't. So I had to go back and mess with all those lockers to get them to join the uh, basic shell build. Uh, and I'll pay for that a little bit later when I change my mind. Because uh, once you join a prefab like that to another, uh, another group, all its pieces become individual within that group. So you don't get the whole locker to move. So having more or less finished the build, or at least I thought I had at that point, um, it was time to place it and set it up to work in the exhibit. Um, and uh, wall those trees off from hungry sauropods and still make sure our sauropods can get in and out. I assume these animals might really like a uh, one-way uh, street through the building. Um, so I wanted to set that up for the habitat. And having done that, it's time to prune plants and move them around. Uh, I'm doing this all with that road that I laid in there in mind and also what I'm planning on doing for the next habitat in the Jurassic section of the park. Uh, no big secret who that's going to be because we all know there's only one other Jurassic animal. Um, but you if you're sharp-eyed, you see another viewing platform uh, showing up occasionally in the background there. Um, so that gives you a good idea where that exhibit's going to go. Uh, then a little bit of touch-up on the powering system. Uh, realized I needed something to engage the pistons uh, with the door. And the pistons themselves were flush against the, the concrete blocks, which is not a good choice. Um, if I were to do this over again, I might have chosen the, um, the simple blocks from the modern theme as opposed to these backstage uh, walls. While they're great backstage concrete walls, and they, I love the variation on it, it doesn't appear to want a color for me. So I had been hoping to make it um, a sandier tone to let it blend into the Jurassic environment a little bit better. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, so I'm relying on screening it from the various points guests could see it. Uh, I did go and check to see that uh, they could... Uh, yeah, here, yeah, there's me trying to change the colors. Uh, to, to see what they could see from the, the viewing platform for this habitat. 
and it's pretty darn well screened. Uh, a normal human probably wouldn't be able to, to see that building. Uh, so that's great. That does the job. Um, it was all too much of a single shell and just big hollow well, barn-like thing. But I wanted a little bit more variation. Uh, so I started building this enclosed or semi-enclosed area. And you can see I hit a bump where I had to move things. And then I decided I want to close off the end because uh, I didn't like how things were going. You'll see me mess with the lockers to move it around. And having put those the backstage brick walls in, it occurred to me that there's so much of that gray brick it's overwhelming and I wanted to change that and you you'll see me change that out later like right now um, and I you know I think that helps the monotony of the building so uh, I'm not a hundred percent happy with the blend of the two textures uh, but I am very happy with not having it all so monotonous uh, because it is so big and the walls are, are so long, uh, hard to, to break them up. Um, so um, we're getting toward the end of the video and we'll do some cinematics with the animals. You'll see that they can actually use the barn. Uh, I did cut out the parts where the animal's head went through the wall and such like that, but that's gonna happen anyway. But for a cinematic, you don't want that happening. So they can move in the barn, through the barn. They can walk through the door. And this is all to the good. And uh, so uh, that's it. pretty much it for this time. Next time, I think it will be that other Jurassic habitat. Um, and uh, if you're liking this stuff, please subscribe and like it. Um, maybe we can get uh, some more traction and coverage from YouTube on this stuff. Anyway, you all take care. Be kind to each other. Uh, Dino Bob and uh, apparently my uh, Camarasaurus uh, heading off into the sunset. So you'll see you again in another video. Take care.